Hey everyone, so I have a book review today and this is The Diamond Girls by Jacqueline Wilson. Now I believe that this is my first Jacqueline Wilson book review, which I need to slap myself over because Jacqueline Wilson is my all-time favourite author. I read her books continuously as a child and even now I'll dip into them for a light read. And this is what I was doing just now because I've read a few really heavy books that really need a lot of thought and um, analysis and things. So I thought, I'm going to get a light read. So I got Jacqueline Wilson's The Diamond Girls, and I have read this, I read this, um, when I was about 12 maybe I read it, and it is for that target, target, age, target age, it's about 9 to 12, 9 to 13, but I think after that you're pushing it, and I didn't really like it then, I don't really know why, I mean I did enjoy it, but it wasn't one which I went and bought, it was a library book I had then, this is my own, and I thought second time round is much, much better. So the cover, first of all, you've got a couple of little Nick Chirac drawings down there. But you, you'll see with the revamped covers, there's a lot more of Nick Chirac in your face. Whereas with this one, it just looks sort of basic and dull. I'm not a massive fan of it. Um, but you'll be grateful to know that the plot is a lot better. It focuses on the Diamond Girls. Their surname is Diamond. There's the mum. There's the older sister, Martine. There's the next sister, Jude. Then the sister who is 12, Rochelle, and then Dixie, who is the narrator of this story. It's told in first person. And they also have their mother. And at the beginning, the mother is pregnant with her baby boy, her first boy. And, you know, what she'd assume to be her last boy. But they're also moving house. We learn very quickly that there is, you know, it's a big, big family. And they have to move house. And the, mo the mother's like, don't worry, I know you don't want to go, but we're going to move to this dream house. And in the first few chapters, they move to this house. And this house is a dump. You know, it's like those really horrible, grimy houses you see on the TV like when like the local council report that these buildings have been trashed by kids. You know, there's pee everywhere and there's graffiti and the house is filthy and it's disgusting. But Dixie is determined that her sisters and the mother and the boy are all going to have this really good life and they're going to make it work. Whatever needs to be done, needs to be done. Um, the rope in Dixie's father's workmate um, Dixie's father works as a, no, I can't remember the word, um, it's not an undertaker but he does carry in the coffins and things, really you know, not a job I'd like to have. So, this, so he gets roped in, so we have these sort of six, seven sometimes central characters but usually you only get to see things from Dixie's point of view, which gives you the opportunity to sort of sit and think, do I agree with what Dixie's saying, do I think I feel the same way and I really like that because sometimes if it's if it's told in third person, you you get everybody's opinions thrown at you and you don't really get the chance to sort of sit and try and agree with these characters or disagree with the characters because there's so much information being thrown around. I'm going to put the book down. There's so much information being thrown at you that you don't really get the chance to sit and stop and think about how you feel about situations. Whereas if you're just really focusing on one character's views, you get to see how your thoughts connect with hers and if they're the same. So I do really like that. Um, so as time goes on, you get to see whether this new house will actually work, whether there's complications with the birth of her first baby boy, whether all the sisters will gel or whether they'll fight, because you'll see that they're sort of split into twos, Martine and Rochelle and Jude and Dixie, because um, all their personalities are so different. So they do clash, but yeah, you get to see if they're actually going to end up pulling together. There's also a mysterious little girl who lives in the house next door to the new house, um, and you get to find out more about her as well. And little Dixie has a little stuffed bird, which is a charat drawing of it there, who she takes around with her. Just a little teddy that's stuffed up her sleeve, because she is a primary school child. Um, and you get to see more of this bird as well. This bird becomes quite important. So it is really enjoyable. The writing is quite a good size. You know, it's not absolutely massive. Um, that you, It's like kindergarten size. But it's not so small that it kind of puts off preteen readers. The thing, about, what, the thing that Jacqueline Wilson does is that she gives us normal everyday situations to, to, to think about. There are some authors, I, I won't name them, who write about celebrity lifestyles and people trying to make it as television stars. Hypocrite. <clears throat> I know. But there are um, authors who write about lifestyles which seem a little bit far-fetched. Jacqueline Wilson is the queen of writing stories about real life situations, about kids whose parents are going through divorce. Kids who are in care homes, you know Tracy Beaker, it's such a classic one. Um, here are kids who are in massive families and their situations are a little bit a little bit difficult and it allows the readers, especially if they can connect with it, to feel normal because there are hundreds of kids out there 
who are in similar situations and they look around and they see all these kids with perfect families and perfect lives and they feel alone whereas we all know that that's not the real situation you could be sitting there right now with a problem whatever it may be and you may feel like the only person in the world with that problem but I promise you now that you will not be the only person there will be hundreds maybe thousands of people going through the same thing as you it's just nobody wants to talk about it so authors like Jacqueline make these seem more normal and more real than these authors who write cushy stories which are really quite fake so you know much credit to her there she really deserves the title of children's laureate she is fantastic this book is not my favorite Jacqueline Wilson book above it I have Lola Rose um, Tracy Be the three the Tracy Beaker trilogy and um, the the three girls books um, girls in tears girls night out um, girls out late the sleepover club um, the sleepover club um, suitcase kid Lottie project the mum minder there are so many more I prefer but I'm not saying it's a bad book not at all it is so good it's really comforting to read obviously if you are a mature reader if you are a more advanced reader than the target audience it is a light read it's just something nice you can read which still makes you think about things while not making you think too hard to try and understand it um, this I think I actually got this for like a pound or something from like a, a charity store but it was brand new I was like bargain it's got 11 pound there we go 99 pence that's where I volunteer I volunteer at Oxfam um, it's our, it's got um, 11 pound on the back you're going to pay about 6 or 7 pound I think it's out in paperback as well so if you want a copy um, it shouldn't cost you too much but libraries tend to stock a lot of Jacqueline Wilson books because she's so popular um, fantastic author yeah so please feel free to leave comments on that about this book I have another pile about this big of Jacqueline Wilson books to get through which I have previously read but I want to have reviewed every single Jacqueline Wilson book at some point on my channel so let me know your favourites or ones maybe you really didn't like that you'd like me to share my thoughts with um, if I have it I will do that one. If not, I will go and buy it or go to the library and see if I can get a copy. Um, yeah, but please let me know any thoughts on this book or anything about Jacqueline Wilson or anything at all. But that is it for just now, so I will see you next time. Bye!